Over the last 10 years, the Department of Radiology at the University of Florida College of Medicine has conducted a simulation-based evaluation of radiology resident competence in critical care imaging. 243 residents interpreted this case of angioedema as one of 65 cases during an 8-hour simulated on-call shift, with a median score of 0 out of 10 and an overall average score of 2.70 out of 10. On average, 4.35 points out of 10 were lost due to misobservations. At the same time, 2.83 points were lost due to interpretive errors. We define an effective report to be one which achieves scores between 7 and 10. In terms of letter grades, this would be an A or a B. In this most missed case, 22% of residents produce effective reports. We define a report having a critical error to be one with scores between 0 and 2. In terms of letter grades, this would be a D or an F. In this most missed case, 65% of residents produce reports with critical errors. This 41-year-old female presented to our emergency room with um, extreme airway uh, symptoms and in respiratory distress and had some generalized uh, swelling around the lower face and neck noted clinically that was believed to possibly be related to a retropharyngeal abscess. So that was our presumption going in. However, as you look at this patient, uh, not only is her face swollen, but her scalp is swollen. This is not just fat. This is uh, edematous fat in the subcutaneous uh, portions of the scalp. As we go down, clearly there's a correlate to the um, facial swelling that was seen clinically. This fat here is uh, much too dense, and the strands in it are consistent with generalized facial edema. With regard to her airway distress, we begin the evaluation of the airway on this contrast-enhanced CT study in the nasopharynx. Her nasopharynx is uh, fairly wide open, although there is some uh, indistinctness of the tissue planes here consistent with peripharyngeal edema, and this becomes uh, increasingly evident as we go uh, to the more inferior sections where there is generalized edema within the soft palate and within the palatine tonsils, and then a classic edema pattern, not retropharyngeal abscess, but a classic edema pattern in the retropharyngeal space uh, in a distribution that is consistent with the retropharyngeal and not prevertebral space. Continuing inferiorly, the generalized edema pattern in neck uh, persists, the retropharyngeal edema persists, and in fact, now the retropharyngeal edema is even more evident, and as we move into the larynx, there is generalized uh, soft tissue swelling of the areopiglottic folds, the posterior pharyngeal wall, the false vocal folds, and, uh, and, and going down uh, to the uh, base of the arytenoids with generalized swelling in the lateral compartments of the neck around the carotid sheaths. Uh, so, the scenario here is somebody uh, who does not have an evident infection, has generalized uh, edema, not only in the peripharyngeal soft tissues, but also in the uh, subcutaneous soft tissues. And in our experience, this is almost universally related to angioedema. Um, and uh, it's not uncommon nowadays. There is a fairly long list of uh, of um, drugs that can cause this. Uh, this is uh, fairly common in the calcium channel blockers and ACE inhibitors, but there's a substantial list, list of drugs that can cause this uh, angioedema pattern. It uh, is fully capable of causing severe and life-threatening uh, airway encroachment, and uh, so this is a highly emergent situation. The second we saw this pattern, we informed the emergency medical doctors that this was not a retropharyngeal abscess, but angioedema, that there was a risk of rapid progression. You don't know which way this is gonna go. And uh, so the patient um, was admitted, uh, treated with uh, uh, steroids, and did uh, quite well.